Hello. <laughs> That was the best hello that we've had yet. Thank you. I hope it, it... It's like you plug your nose at the back and you say, hello. Yeah. Try it. It's like, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Umbrella. Uh, Allie. Hi. Today we're going to talk a little bit about behind the scenes. What happens behind the Instagram photos or yeah. behind the things that get pushed out into the Which public. Which is my favorite thing. I know. You talk about often, I'm just going to, this whole segment is going to be me telling people what you talk about a lot. You often talk about, you wish there was a feature on Pinterest where you could see a cool photo and then be like, turn the camera 180 and see what was going on oh, behind the I scenes. I would never get anything done. <laughs> I would be on it all the time. But it would be pretty lame because people who are on Pinterest to honestly look for recipes or whatever. Yeah. Would be confused. They're like, I don't care. This isn't for them. It's right. for me. We need a different Pinterest. <laughs> yes. So today we're going to talk about photography. We sure are. And we're going to talk about the behind the scenes of planning and putting together a exciting, fun, creative, beautiful, lovely photo shoot. Yep. And producing good, fantastic photos. And hopefully it's interesting to photographers and people who hire photographers. And humans. We'll say photographers Anyone. and humans. Yes. Um, what would be... We'll talk a little bit about why it's important to talk through this. Well, at first, it came up in my brain waves because I was just thinking about how I prepare differently for photo shoots now than I did when I first started. And um, there's just a lot more. Like, it wasn't until I started writing out my process for photo shoots that I realized, like, how much is, in, is involved. So I think it's important because oftentimes creative people or anyone who really has a service business or anything is just like, you know, they always hear, oh, this shouldn't take long or like, I just need a simple photo shoot. Because the other thing that's true is we teach people how to take photos. True. And a lot of that teaching is us demystifying the true. process. But that doesn't mean we don't plan and pay attention and yeah. be creative and try new things. Yeah. And I get inspired from even looking at, I follow a few other stylists, not necessarily photographers, some, some, I follow like two cookbook photographers. So I get to see a lot about, not necessarily they're sharing what goes into their planning, but you can see a lot of details that communicate preparation. Right. So, so as you're planning a photo shoot, mm -hmm. tell me about what are some of the first things someone's like, Hey, I want to do a photo shoot. Mm. What are the first things you start talking about? You mean like someone who wants to get their photos taken? Right. Someone's like, hey, I want, to have, I want to hire you for a photo shoot for. Mm -hmm. My seashells. Seashell. No, let's do something else. Let's do food. Okay. Someone has a food business, a restaurant maybe. Okay. They're like I want to hire you to take pictures because mm -hmm. your photos are great. So what do we do now? What do we need to talk about? Yeah. What do we need to plan? So what kind of questions do you ask and then how do you go through the process? Yeah. So the first thing I like to talk to them about is the overall goal. You know, are you taking mm. these for social? Are you taking these for your menu, for your online ordering app? Are they just for marketing? Are they going to go up at the mall, like on a billboard? You know, there's like so many different uses because that makes me think about um, the context. So a lot of times when I take pictures for people's apps or online stores, you do need a clear cut photo of it on white or a neutral background, something that really pops, Right. really just depends on the design of everything. So when I work with some clients, they'll say, yeah, we, we often need white space on the left side of the photo or the right side. Um, and they start getting into those specifics and I'll say, awesome. I need you to start to create a shot list. So this would be a list of things that you need if you walk away from this relationship and you have this, you'll be happy. Mm. And it's prioritized from top to bottom. Right. So I can't promise that we can get everything shot. I can do a pretty good job of making sure that it will, but we need to understand priority. Right. While they're creating the shot list, I also ask them to create a mood board. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to just copy those photos. It just really helps me get into their head of what they think looks good. Right. And a lot of times I'll, I can look at a mood board and say, okay, we have a ton of different surfaces happening here. Some of them have black linen. Some of them have like gray. Um, some seem like they're shot nat with natural light. Some feel like they're not shot with natural light. So yeah. I can start to pick apart and basically create a mock itinerary. And that allows me to say, with these four different setups, I can get this many photos in eight hours. 
uh, with a break for lunch and all that. And we get to the point where they're understanding the investment and I'm understanding what I'm going to be taking pictures of. Gotcha. Um, what about if, cause this has happened before yeah. where someone says, I just want you to do your creative thing mm. and I don't maybe people aren't so excited to give us a mood board. They kind of want you to yeah. do your thing that you do. Right. So how does that change? Does it not change? Yeah. So sometimes if I feel like that's a big ask, I will charge money for me to create a direction. I mean, I'm essentially art directing right. or creating a mood board or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes it's simple enough where I'm like, I'm kind of thinking like this and I send them four pictures. Right. But um, I very much gladly will take into account where this will live as a photograph. Who is it for? What does your brand already look like? Mm-hmm. Um. When it comes to food, we also talk about where are we going to be? Are we going to be in our studio where you're bringing the food? Are you cooking it in our studio or mm-hmm. am I coming to you? There are limitations that happen at both places. Yeah. Um, but I am very happy to provide art direction. Um, like I said, sometimes it just takes a long time. So talk about free. how you balance. Cause at this point you're talking a lot about logistics of pulling a shoe off, mm-hmm. organizing, and then you're also getting into creatively how you want to push or visually mm-hmm. how you want to push something how do you balance that? And is it different per project that you're working on? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Talk about how you think through that. Yeah. So, I mean, we were talking about food, but I would say overall, I try to spend most of my time leading up to my test shoot, which I try almost all the time if I can booking a test shoot, whether that's the day of before the client arrives the day before or like weeks in advance. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to accomplish what I want through that test shoot so that I can show them and they can, the client can get excited about it. Um, they can say, no, this is totally the wrong direction. Now that we see it, let's try something else. And, um, by the time I'm doing my test shoot, I really hope to have all of those logistics finished. Yeah. Um, and then when we photograph cookbooks, if I have someone coming in to cook the food, whether it's the author or a chef that we've hired, I feel like then I can really focus on styling. You know, I can like get the food handed to me. I can tweak things. You know, there's just a lot that comes with photographing things like food because it's so style heavy. It's like, is the author of the cookbook or the chef who makes the food, are they dictating that style or do they need? It's just basically saying like, what do you have as a client? And then what do you need help with? You know, and I know a lot of times we work with restaurants will say, do we want to use the same Mm-hmm. silverware or plateware, flatware that's used in your restaurant or do you want to use something different? Yeah. How do you want to handle all of that? Tell me about how this is different mm-hmm. if we're photographing people. Like mm. let's say I'm a an apparel company and I have yeah. clothing. How is it different um, taking pictures of food versus people? What are things to consider? Yeah, so with people, you have to deal with everything that's involved with a person. So with food, you have like ingredients and then someone makes it and doesn't matter. Someone's going to make it look delicious. Hopefully with people, it really starts to get more complicated. The more control you want over everything. So it's one thing to say, I need just people within this age range to be wearing my t-shirts outside. Right. That's like a pretty simple shoot. Hoping the weather cooperates. Right. Yeah. Um, if you're getting more specific, like where it's located, what their hair looks like, do their nails need to be done? Is their makeup getting done? Are they the right build? Do you have enough diversity? You know, like you start to get into a ton more and that's a huge project management role. Mm -hmm. Um, so when clients don't have enough money to pay us to do that, they can do it. And that saves the money because what I'm doing is I'm just taking pictures, everything else has been figured out. Um, you know, you have to schedule them, make sure that they're in here and on time or, you know, at the location on time. Um, and then I can take it from there. And so, yeah, there's just a little bit more, you can get photos back and just be like, Oh, I wish her hair wasn't like that. Go down specifically. Why don't you break down when you're taking photos of people, Mm -hmm. what are some of the things, um, that you would want someone to think through? Like, Mm -hmm. I know you'd have somebody think through, um, age range, yeah. how much 
how important is what the models or subject matter looks like. Yeah. Um, the size of those people. Yeah. The you're doing it. You're saying all of it. that. Yeah. So it's basically it's it's a preference thing. Like to ask yourself if you got your photos back, like how much control do you want over what these people look like? And I see a lot of people try to cut corners and just get volunteers or like friends and family. They're right. not comfortable in front of the camera. I can only do so much if, you know, yeah. if they're not what you're looking for. Um, and they'll say, oh my gosh, like we don't have much diversity in like skin color. Like everybody's very white. And I'll say that has to be communicated to me, you know, beforehand, or you might find yourself with a lot of photos that you don't feel like you can use. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing would be, who are you selling something to? Does it represent mm -hmm. them? Right. We see things like day of is hair, makeup, wardrobe, mm -hmm. um, time. Yeah. You know, we've shot with, we photographed kids for things and there's an expiration on yeah. how much time they're going like to spend. a couple minutes. Yeah. How much are you paying? Models, are you paying them anything? Mm -hmm. Are they volunteering? Do you yeah. feel comfortable taking up four hours of their day if they're volunteering? Right. And so your yeah. mood board should kind of dictate some of these desires. Like mm. I think Pinterest is great because you can add captions and talk about specifically what you prioritize. Um, and so I definitely think that it's one of those things where if you can find, if you can think through all of these details and your mood board can reflect that, um, you know, someone might send me a picture of someone holding, um, let's say a puppy. Right. And say like, oh, I really want my apparel brand to have photos of people like in their home looking casual with their pets or I don't know, I'm making this up. And so the next questions I have are like, are you booking the models? Are you taking care of what they're what are they wearing other than your apparel? Do we have permission to shoot in their homes? Like, do they even have beautiful homes like mm -hmm. that? You know, so someone can look at a picture and think like that doesn't look that complex, right. but there's just a lot of details that go into it. Yeah. The other thing that we find often is prioritizing um, color as far as uh, we just did a photo shoot for a salon mm -hmm. and it is very much representing the hair accurately. Yeah. Um, that's really important. Mm -hmm. If we have to do some edits that change the color of clothing someone's wearing, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as much. But the hair matters yeah. very much. Um, or being able to reflect the um, makeup yeah. appropriately or accurately is mm -hmm. a big deal. Um, yeah. And all of that, understanding what's really important, is it important to show off your clothing the right way? Mm -hmm. Does it matter if your food is the exact same color that it right. is in real life? Because even those like greens can shift to look more blue, you know? Yeah. And so I think all of that is just really important. Those are important details to figure out. We've, we often have people who, you know, some photo shoots we do are on a budget mm -hmm. where they're like, I just need this to look good enough. I have a lot of products and I need it from our website. Mm -hmm. um, and for those people, we often are like, if you let us, if you come in here for an hour, we can show you everything you need to do. Yeah. Um, or we can come to your house and teach you how to do all of that. Right. And you don't need us to do that for you because yeah. often within that budget, you're sacrificing something creatively or, Mm -hmm. You know, there's something that you're ending up doing. Yeah. Um, there's also something to like, I, sh when I photograph products, I can get through probably within like four hours, I can photograph, I don't know, 30 to 50 unique photos. And so it's also like, how quickly can you scrap a scene and restyle it? How can you make it look unique and different? Um, you know, we sometimes get clients who have a product, but they need supportive props and yeah. so you know are you having are you relying on your photographer to come up with those are you bringing them if you're working with a photographer that's done it before they will ask a lot of these questions but if you are working with someone who's really talented but doesn't have the experience break down everything you see in your mood board like yeah. I see you know this bracelet I see her makeup done with like it's a smoky eye I see this cool velvet couch and if you don't get all those things you might be disappointed in the final product because yeah. there was something about those photos that attracted you. Right. No, I dig that. Um, what else is always surprising about a photo shoot? What we always, people? it always takes a while to get into it. Like it feels like you're kind of mm. running against the clock. And then the last like half, on an eight day, like on an eight hour shoot, mm -hmm. 
the first hour and a half feels is so clunky, slow. Yeah. Yeah. You are getting the rhythm down. I always finish like my photo shoots always finish ahead of time. Yeah. So we make up for it as we get faster. Um, other things that we encounter is just um, technology. Like you end up having some things that are whether like that my tethering is slow or, you know, we once had a light like pop and explode I had to take it back you know so you just you can't really anticipate those things which is why they always say have backups and have a plan um you know I know wedding photographers who have a second camera body on them right um you definitely don't want your camera to die you know um and I always just say like overly communicate Mm. if you're the client or the photographer say something if you don't like it say something if something isn't working um that communication is really key. Yeah. I think the other thing that is often true is if you watch celebrities get photographed on TV Mm -hmm. or you see like some crazy, like an amazing photo shoot that someone did at the Oscars or something like that. Yeah. um, The production that will go into that will be nuts. Yes. And I'm imagining for the people who listen to this podcast that probably isn't going to be your experience. Yes. It very much looks like what it looks like here. Yeah. You know? Right. Um, right. We always, when we do our food photography workshops or our food styling workshops, it's always like, as long as this one three by three square on looks the table good. looks good, then mm-hmm. we're pretty good. Yeah. It definitely looks a lot less sexy than the final shot. People will be standing right next to me looking at the dish and they're like it looks so much better in your shot i'm like that's good because it looks weird (laughs) it looks very underwhelming yeah um but yeah so i think just you know if you're working with someone and you feel like that you're not thinking through these things it's okay to voice your questions and your concerns and if you're a photographer i think the more you can be organized the less um the less surprises come up and that's why i I try to tether and have my my photos feed to my computer as much as I can because I'd rather the client in the moment look at me in the eye and say that they hate it and fix it than get done with a shoot and decide like, okay, they hate it. Should I refund them? Should I redo it? And, that, you know, over, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's a little vulnerable and scary to have your work yeah. flash up on the screen, but I think it's worth it. Yeah. And once you get those things organized, you can understand – if you're working on a client shoot or if you're a client hiring a photographer, Mm -hmm. you're understanding where do you have specifics that you need taken care of and then where can they be creative or where can you be creative? Yep. And all of that is important. It is. It's a good question that we talked about. Yeah. A good behind the scenes. Anything else you've observed from someone who's like not shooting? It always, you should have two people. The more assistance you have behind the scenes, the better. Even on when we do our, I think of the food styling workshops or the even photo 101, mm-hmm. like to have somebody sit it's there so and important. hold a reflector yeah, or to just be a second set of eyes to say, yeah, oh, there's like shadows on that part that you, you were worried about. Yeah. Are the lights working? You're not paying attention to the shadows. That's there's, so true. It's there's hard. always something. Yeah. It's hard to like think of everything when yeah. you're taking the picture, and the, which is why you have stylus on set right. or something. And the photo shoots that we've been on that are, have larger crews you know, have one person who's just checking to make sure eyeballs are in focus every photo. Yeah. And another person who's just checking the, he's just in charge of, yeah. is this one light hitting the model correctly? I know. I remember, you know, cause we're definitely like a couple person show. We're not like one person. It's not a one person show, but it's not like a team of 30. And when you I have was the most fun, when you get to have a cut, it's help. not, yeah. yeah when, when you it's do not by just yourself, me. you're always like, it's, I'm like sweating a lot. But there's a shoot that I was on in New York, um, the one that Zach Posen was at. And it was crazy. Like I watched 30 people get the space ready and like light it and test it. And the photographer literally just like walked in, picked up the camera and like shot. And like like almost he was just a celebrity as Zach. Yeah. Um, Not that he is, but it it was Zach's photographer. You know, it was like everything was prepared. He didn't have to like set up the lights or like, you know, clean up the kitchen or prepare his clothing or yeah. style it. It was literally just like someone handed him a camera. And that's not fun. You, that's not. Oh, I would hate yeah. that. Yeah. Cause I was going to say, we've been offered a couple of shoots where they're like, we have a stylist, we have lighting, we have that, we have this, we have our director yeah. will be there. And you're like, so you just want me to push a button. Yeah. It just isn't like, 
all, I mean, that's great for if that's what that person yeah. wants to do, but it just isn't that interesting to me. And I would rather be more of a behind the scenes person. Um, but then I would also want the credit of like, that's why it looks good. It wasn't like, cause he knows how to push the shutter button, you know? Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it really makes you think about, you know, what part of the process do you like? If you're a photographer, like, what do you like about it? And then get help to do the things you don't like to do. Truth. So that's all I got. Thanks for sharing. Hello? Hey, it's producer Michael. I have a quick question for you. Oh, hey. Yeah, hey, I was wondering if you could introduce yourself to our listeners and then tell me a little bit about what the Diamond membership has been like for you. My name is Jennifer Fault, and honestly, I do a lot of things, but mostly I provide creative communication solutions for women who own small businesses. The Diamond membership is a great extension of the coaching I did with Adam in 2017. So if you're interested in learning more about our monthly capsules and our webinar, things like that, you can head to thewonderjam.com slash membership. You know what I'm feeling? What? This is my segment yeah. that I came up with. You did. Do you know what it's and called? And I want you to tell my I want you to tell people about it. The segment is called Isn't That Neat? Right. <laughs> and so we just share things that are neat. I can't wait. I know. Do you know what yours is? Um I do. Let's hear do it. Do you know what yours is? Nope. Not yet. Not yet. But you're going to figure it yep. out. So my favorite neat thing mm -hmm. that has happened has been one of my friends. His name's Kanye West. <laughs> he has rejoined Twitter. Oh. Which were, it's just cool to be able to tweet to him again. That's so nice. Because um, I've missed him. He wasn't on Twitter before? No, he was on before, but then he went away. Oh. And that's kind of how I talk to him. Oh, that's the only way. That's the way. way I communicate with him. <laughs> I don't have his cell phone number. Oh, so you guys so aren't really friends. He came back. Cool. And then he started, he deleted all of his old tweets. Cool. Um, which I, I guess you can do whatever you want. Yeah. And then um, he was actually posting some screenshots from his computer mm -hmm. that were of random things that he's had designed or things he was working on. So that's it was cool. like, old concepts he worked on of his shoes and That's sweet. things like that, um, which was just kind of fun. get like a little bit into his head. Yeah, to see that he was like very um, rough sketches and drawings yeah. of like, hey, I want to do like this. Like last so. time we talked about perfect isn't... Yeah, perfection is the enemy. Is the enemy, yeah. Right. That's really cool. Yeah. I'm really happy for you and your friend Kanye. Yeah. Yeah. It's been cool to see what he's up to. For sure. So, oh yeah, I want to just give him a shout out. If you want to go follow him, it's at Kanye <laughs> West. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I feel cool, like cool. he doesn't have to, he, Love it. He like came back to Twitter and in like four hours had like, uh, I was like 700,000 followers or something. Oh yeah. Like yeah, he's so popular. Yes. He it's cool that you're friends with him. What is neat in your world? What do you think's neat? Well, you know, I actually just saw recently that the Women's Fund here in Columbus, um, they just replace Gina Rodriguez on their um, key holder, key holder? Why do I want to say keynote? Yeah. Yeah. Key holder event with Roxanne Gay, which oh, I cool. really like Roxanne, Roxanne. Gay. Yeah. So I'm going to buy a ticket for sure. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was excited. Um, and the other thing was, oh, what was the other thing? Oh, I'm I'm excited. I'm kind of like planning a upgrade to our back patio. Oh, our back patio. Isn't that neat? It is so neat. I love sitting outside and so I want it to feel like an oasis of sorts. Yeah. So keep it, keep it tabs to. on it by following me at Ally Pal. Right. You can follow <laughs> Ally on Twitter at Ally Pal. You can follow Kanye West on Twitter. But at don't follow me on Kanye Twitter. West. I don't update things like my patio on Twitter. You should. I think people would be into it. I really like fell out of a relationship with Twitter and now I just stalk. But people need you there. Really? They don't need you to be stalking. They yeah, because I read stuff. Twitter. I just, yeah, I don't say a lot. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening. Okay. Okay, bye. <laughs>